Amityville Horror. In December of 1975, George and Kathy Rutz and their three children moved into 112 Ocean Avenue, Amityville, New York. It's a suburban neighborhood located in the south shore of Long Island in New York. Thirteen months before the Lutz family moved in, Ronald Defoe Jr. had shot and killed six members of his own family at the house. After 29 days, the Lutz family left the house, claiming that they had been terrorized by paranormal uh, phenomena while living there. After the Defoe murders, the house remained empty for 13 months until the, until George and Kathy Lutz decided to buy the house at what was considered a bargain price of $80,000. The six-bedroom house was built in Dutch colonial style and had a distinct Gambriel room with a swimming pool and a boathouse as it was located on a canal. George and Kathy were happily married in July of 1975 and each owned their own separate homes. They wanted to start off fresh in their marriage. So they both purchased a new property. Kathy had three children from a previous marriage. Daniel, who was nine, Christopher, who was seven, and Melissa, or Missy, who was five. They also owned a Malamute crossbred Labrador named Harry. During the first inspection of the home, the real estate broker told them about the Defoe murders and asked if this would affect their decision. After discussing the situation, both George and Kathy Lutz decided that it was not a problem, for, not for the amount of money that was being asked for the property. Much of the furniture that belonged to the Defoe family was still in the house and was included with $400 as part of the deal. A friend of George found out about the history of the house and insisted on having it blessed. George was a non-practicing Methodist and had no clue on what this would involve, but Kathy was a non-practicing Catholic who explained to him what this would entail. George knew the Catholic priest at the Sacred Hearts Rectory who he knew would be willing to carry out the Catholic blessings. He arrived to do the blessings while George and Kathy were unpacking their belongings. He went into the house in order to carry out the rites. When he flickered the first bit of holy water and began to pray, he heard a masculine voice say, Get out. He left the house immediately, not mentioning what had happened to either George or Kathy. On Christmas Eve that same year, the priest made a call to George and Kathy, advising them to stay out of the second floor room where he had heard the mysterious voice. This was the former bedroom of John Matthew Defoe, and also the room that Kathy had plans of turning into a sewing room. The call was cut short with static, supposedly. The father developed a high fever and blisters similar to that of a stigmata. Talking about their experiences, it felt as though George and Kathy were living in a different house. George would wake up around 3.15 in the morning and go out to check the boathouse. This was coincidentally the same time in the morning as when the Defoe murders took place. The house was plagued by swarms of flies despite the winter weather. Kathy had vi vivid nightmares about the murders and had discovered the order in which each killing occurred and which room that they took place in. 
Daniel, Christopher, and Melissa all started sleeping on their stomachs in the same way that the murdered Defoe family family's bodies had been found. Kathy would feel the sensation of a warm embrace in a loving man no embrace, a loving warm embrace in a loving manner and by un, an unseen force. While George discovered a four foot by five foot hidden room located in the basement. The room was painted red, which came to be known as the Red Room, and didn't appear in the blueprints of the house. This room was located in the basement, also, and also had a profound effect on their dog, Harry, who sensed something ominous or ominous and refused to go near it. There were cold spots and odors of perfume in areas of the house where no wind, drafts, ventilation, or piping could explain the source. While tending the fire in the fireplace, George and Kathy saw an image of a demon with half of his head blown off. It was burned into the soot in the back of the fireplace. The Lutz's five-year-old daughter developed an imaginary friend named Joby, a demonic creature with glowing red eyes. George would wave up, wake up, George would wake up to the sound of the front door slamming. He would race downstairs to find the dog sleeping soundly at the front door. Nobody else heard the sound of the door slam but George. George said that it was loud enough to have wakened the entire house. George would also hear what he described as the sound of a German marching band tuning up or what sounded like a clock radio playing not quite on frequency. Every time he went downstairs to find out where the sounds were coming from, all of the sounds he heard would cease when he made it to the stairway. George Lutz finally discovered how much he resembled Ronald Defoe and began drinking at the Witch's Brew, the same bar where Defoe was once a regular where, John, where Defoe was once a regular customer. Missy claimed that Jody climbed out of her window just before Kathy went to close it. When she did, she saw two glowing red eyes staring at her. And while in bed, she received red welts on her chest caused by unseen forces and also levitated two feet into the air. An unseen force also caused damage to locks doors and windows all through the house. Cloven hoofs, hoof prints attributed to an enormous pig appeared in the snow outside of the house at the beginning of January in 1976. Green gelatin-like slime began to ooze from the walls in the hall in the keyhole in the door to the playroom located in the attic. A 12 inch 30 centimeter crucifix hung in the living room was the next gap. It began to rotate on its own until it was finally upside down and then began to give off a sour smell. George tripped over a four foot high one and a half meter china lion ornament in the living room and found bite marks on one of his ankles. George saw Kathy at one time transform into an old woman of 90 with shocking white and wild hair and a face amassed with huge amounts of wrinkles, ugly lines, and saliva dripping from a toothless mouth. 
out. Missy would sing constantly while in her room and would stop singing when she left the room. She would then start singing again upon returning to, to her room, continuing exactly where she had left off when she had left the room before. After deciding something was definitely wrong with their house that they could not rationally explain, George and Kathy carried out a blessing of their own. On January the 8th, George held a silver crucifix fix, while they both recited the Lord's Prayer and walked through the house. George allegedly heard a chorus of voices asking him, Will you stop? By mid-January, after another attempt of the house blessing by George and Kathy, they would experience what would turn out to be their final night in the house. George Lutz declined to give the full count of the event that happened during the occasion. Describing them as too frightening, after finally getting in touch with the Catholic priest who attempted to bless the house. The first time, George and Kathy decided to take some clothes and stay in Kathy's mother's house in nearby Deer Park, New York, until they had sorted out the problems with the house. They claimed that the phenomena followed them there with a final scene of greenish black slime following them up the staircase after them. Though the Lutz family left the house on January the 14th, leaving their possessions in the house, a mover did go into in the next day to retrieve what they had left behind in order to send them to the Lutz family. He reported no signs of paranormal phenomena within the house while he was there. On the night of March the 6th, 1976, the Warrens entered the house to do an investigation, accompanied by the local television station, which was Channel 5 of the New York. The camera crew and a local news reporter at the time, Michael Linder, during the course of the investigation, Gene Campbell took a series of infrared time-lapse photographs, and one of the images allegedly showed a demonic boy with glowing eyes standing at the foot of the staircase. The photograph, though, did not emerge into the public, into the public domain until 1979. The Warrens have suggested that the house is occupied by malevolent spirits because of the history of the house. The house was built around 1924 for John and Catherine Mon Monaghan. Kathy Lutz passed away in 2004 from emphysema and George Lutz died in 2006 from heart disease. The couple divorced in the late 1980s, but remained in good terms.